The first step to setting up flow functionality is to configure pump master valves and flow sensors in the devices menu, which is covered in a different segment. Then we turn to the flow menu to begin configuration. This video will begin with flow monitoring. A separate tutorial will cover flow management. Flow menu. On the flow menu, select flow operations. Check the flow monitoring box to enable the flow monitor. The screen will show a quick checklist of the required steps to enable flow monitoring, which is the outline for this tutorial. After you have read through the list, click the continue button. Flow Zones Now return to the Flow menu and select Flow Zones. The Flow Zone tells the ACC2 controller what the plumbing and valve connections look like and what their rules are. Think of the Flow Zone as a main line pipe. The pump slash master valves and flow sensor assignments connected in that main line and the collection of valves that are attached to the main downstream. The ACC2 controller can have up to six flow zones with different characteristics, but many installations have one. Scroll down and check the box for monitor flow. Then we will set the very important limits for overflow and underflow in this pipe. These settings determine how much fluctuation is allowed during irrigation before alarms occur and diagnostics begin. Every system is different, but it's important not to set them too close to normal to prevent false alarms. Some users don't realize how much flow can fluctuate during normal operations. City water pressures vary at certain times of the day, and pump operations can also cause the flow rate to surge or drop. Set the overflow limit to allow for normal variations, but still be able to catch real malfunctions in the field. For this example, we'll set the overflow to 120%. This means that if normal flow in the flow zone should be 20 gallons per minute or 75 liters per minute, the system will not alarm until a flow of over 24 GPM or 90 LPM. Same with the underflow. With the normal flow of 20 GPM or 75 LPM, the underflow setting of 50% would mean diagnostics begin at a flow rate of 10 GPM or 39 LPM. Low flow stations such as drip may be difficult to read for some sensors, so adjusting this limit can also reduce false alarms. For now, we'll leave this at 50%. Flow Map Now click the soft key for Flow Map. This is where we assign flow sensors and pump slash master valves to the flow zone. It is possible to have more than one PMV and flow sensor in a single flow zone. Check each box for what is on the main line in the field. If there is more than one water source available on this flow zone, we might have a flow sensor and PMV on each of them, but it is still one flow zone. Flow Limit Then click the soft key for Flow Limits. Here we can set an absolute maximum flow we will allow in this main line. We can also set a value for unscheduled flow. This setting will cause a flow alarm if flow is detected when nothing is supposed to be running. You can set a value to allow for manual irrigation from quick couplers and hose bibs, if desired. Then it will ignore unscheduled flow up to the value you have set and only alarm when that has been exceeded. The alarm delay sets the length of time this overflow must persist before it is treated as an alarm. Increasing the alarm delay is another way to prevent false alarms due to momentary surges in flow. The alarm clear delay specifies how long the flow zone will remain in alarm and not irrigating after a high flow shut down until it tries to run again. You can specify a time in hours, minutes, up to 24 hours, or you can set it to manual only. Manual only means a human will have to clear the alarm at the controller before it can operate again. This decision depends on how stable flow is in normal operation and on how critical a leak in this flow zone is. Clear Flow Alarms The flow menu has a clear flow alarm selection for this purpose. If the system is prone to false alarms, you might want the flow zone to be able to run again after a 12-hour interval has elapsed. However, if the line is not fixed, it will alarm again. Manual only ensures that service personnel must physically visit and reset the controller. 
presumably after repairs are completed. Allowances. Now click the soft key for allowances. This optional feature lets you specify a monthly watering budget for the flow zone. When the controller has measured 80% of the total budget, it will post an alarm. The controller will not stop irrigating when the budget is exceeded. Its only purpose is to alert the user. The manual watering allowance sets an additional flow rate amount allowed for manual irrigation. This amount is added to the high flow limit to allow for manual irrigation that occurs during automatic irrigation. That completes the initial setup for a flow zone. Stations. Station setup. The next step is to add the individual stations to the flow zone. You can continue to set up additional flow zones or go to the stations menu to complete the one you have just begun. This is shown in the next video. In this example, we'll continue to set up our flow zone by moving to the stations menu and selecting station setup. You must specify the flow zone for each station in the system. In effect, this attaches them to the main line pipe being monitored. Even if you only have one flow zone, this must be filled in for flow monitoring to work properly. For flow zone purposes, you don't need to set any of the other fields on the screen yet. We'll attach the first station to flow zone 1 by just selecting that in the flow zone field. On the same screen, under flow measurement settings, we can also adjust the flow alarm delay. This sets the time for which a high flow condition must persist until it is considered a flow alarm. This station level delay setting is another tool to prevent false alarms in case of flow surges or pockets of air in the piping. It means a short-term high flow condition can be ignored until it has lasted long enough to be a true problem. Each station can have this delay adjusted individually since each can have different flow characteristics. Fortunately, there is also a brilliant shortcut for attaching large numbers of stations to a flow zone with the copy and paste feature. Copy button. With the first station attached to flow zone 1, click the copy key. Then use the next station key to advance to the next station number in the flow zone and click the paste key. This will quickly attach the new station to flow zone 1. You can click next and then paste to advance quickly through a large list of stations. When you believe the flow zone setup is complete, there is a quick way to review your complete setup. Go to the flow menu and select the hydraulic summary. Hydraulic summary. At the controller level, it will show you how many flow zones are configured and what devices have been configured. Flow zone button. Click flow zone key. This screen will show the complete configuration of all devices in the selected flow zone. You can review all of the PMVs, flow sensors, and stations that have been attached to the flow zone. You can then correct any mistakes or omissions until the flow zone is perfect. If there are multiple flow zones, you can use the next key to advance through each of them. Once the controller has learned flow, this screen will also show the learned flow for each station. When all the stations in the flow zone are attached, you are almost done. Now the key step is to learn the typical flow by station. It's important to know that the controller will only attempt to learn flow for stations that have a runtime. These are assigned on the programs menu, which is not addressed in this segment. Go to the flow menu and select learn flow. Flow, learn flow. This will show the last time flow was learned at the controller. And on a new setup, it will say never. Now, you have a choice. You can begin the flow learning process immediately. This can take up to 5 minutes per station, but it's usually quicker. It will turn on each station for at least 1 minute, so the sprinklers will run. Depending on the number of stations, this could be a fairly lengthy process, and all other irrigation will be cancelled until it is complete. You also have a choice to schedule automatic learning at a later date and time. One reason this might be a good option is if the system flow characteristics are different when the automatic irrigation occurs, as opposed to the time of day that you happen to be there. City water pressure can be different at night than in the day, so accurate learning can reduce false alarms and provide more accurate flow totals. Just remember, the learning process will always cancel other irrigation, so it can learn one station's flow at a time. Also remember that it will only attempt to learn stations that have a programmed runtime. 
During the learning process, the progress is shown on the controller activity, or home, screen. When the learning process is complete, the Learn screen will display a summary of all learned stations, as well as any stations that fail to learn. Possible causes of stations failing to learn. Not attached to a flow zone review hydraulic summary and fix. No runtime program to enter run times on the program's menu. Unstable flow. The controller waits one full minute for flow to stabilize and then looks for a short series of readings within a 5% range to enter the learned flow. If it cannot get a stable reading within 5 minutes, it fails the station and moves on to the next one. Solution. Investigate system stability issues. Very low flow. Some low flow stations are below some sensor's ability to read reliably, and the flow is seen as zero or unstable. Consider a more accurate flow sensor, or downsize the sensor diameter. It is also possible to place all unreadable stations in their own program, remove them from any flow zones, and run them in a different time window than the monitored irrigation. After flow learning is complete, the learn flow for each station will be displayed automatically on its page in the station setup screen. You can also enter or edit individual station flows by hand on the station setup screen in the station's menu. But learning with an accurate sensor is usually more accurate. At this point, you will have a complete flow setup. You can back up your learn flow progress to the controller's memory or with an external card. To do this, go to the Advanced Features menu and select Easy Retrieve. Advanced Features, Easy Retrieve. You can store a backup in the controller's memory by just clicking Save, and it will store all the information inside the face back. However, you can also store it on the controller's SD card with a short file name and remove the card for safekeeping. If your face back is ever replaced for any reason, you will always have a backup copy at home or office that can be restored with a couple of clicks. Home screen, view flow. Whenever stations are running, you can view the flow in real time from the activity screen with the view flow soft key. This will show the flow rate for all flow sensors in near real time as the sensors update their measurements. You can view the complete flow history by selecting flow totals on the flow menu. Flow. Flow totals. This will show a total for the controller and then each sensor individually. You can select a date range and view the totals by day, week, month, or year. You can also export all the flow totals to an SD card from the Advanced Features menu by selecting Export Logs. Advanced Features, Export Logs. Make sure an SD card is inserted in the reader. The export screen will offer a file name with the day's date, but you can edit or change the file name if you wish. Check the boxes for the types of logs you want to save, including flow totals, and select export logs. The logs will be saved in a .txt text file format that can be saved and opened on almost any computer. That completes the flow monitoring tutorials. To learn more, visit hunterirrigation.com.